A few weeks back, I did an interview with Kyle from the Oasis Collectors Group, and he shared this amazing piece from his collection. This dad tape is, is literally a pride and joy piece for me because it's just stunning. Um, it's called Oasis B-Side Session Tape, October 1997. It's basically all around the world, the B-Side session for it. So you think to yourself, what could it be really? What What's a B-Side session? Well, it's got, um, for example, Noel singing Street Fighting Man, which is just, I mean, again, just hearing the other brother sing a song is quite special. Since then, he's had that DAT tape mixed down and has posted the raw contents on the Oasis Collectors Group YouTube channel. It's around 21 minutes long and it consists basically of five full playthroughs of Street Fighting Man in different stages of development. Some of the raw data that Kyle has uploaded, it's loops, some guitar parts, some percussion parts, and the drum and the bass cutting in and out. And some of the later ones include all kinds of parts to this song we've never heard before. So today we have a really unique opportunity to do something I've wanted to do for years. We're gonna look at every single studio track Oasis recorded for a Be Here Now era B-side. The B-sides from this time in Oasis history are in my opinion, absolutely brilliant and massively neglected. But there's even more to be learned from the Be Here Now era B-sides. Imagine Be Here Now had done everything that the band, the management and the press had all predicted it would. Imagine it had been even bigger than What's The Story Morning Glory and launched the band to ever greater heights. If that had happened, what would have been next for Oasis? It's impossible to give a conclusive answer to that question, but my opinion is there would have been a fourth album in the classic 90s style released before the new millennium. At this time, Noel was at his absolute height as a lead guitarist, and interestingly, out on the Be Here Now tour, the band had entered a phase of listening to Led Zeppelin relentlessly. I wonder why. They had already channeled and paid tribute to so many great British rock and roll acts of the past. I wonder if Led Zeppelin was next. I remember my first listen through of Be Here Now. That was actually my impression when it came to the song Fading Out. I wondered if I was hearing the first seeds of where Oasis in the grand master plan were intending to go next. In the end, of course, that fourth 90s album with the classic lineup and the classic sound never happened. And when that next album finally came out, it was a very dark, slightly psychedelic come down album in which Noel was dealing with a lot of his demons and the fallout of his psychotic episode as a result of drug addiction. So we sadly never got to hear where Oasis in an ideal world were heading for their fourth album. However, on the Be Here Now tour, there were definite glimpses of what should have come next. And the B-sides from the Be Here Now era are absolutely fascinating to me because they represent the only studio recordings of what the next phase of Oasis might have sounded like if they hadn't hung up the towel for three years. And there are huge differences between Be Here Now, the album, and the B-sides. Be Here Now was something of a mad concept album and a bit of a sonic experiment. Noel Gallagher and producer Owen Morris's mission in the studio was to fill every single track of two 48 track analog recorders. Every song had 96 tracks. 
So of course, there were millions of guitar overdubs and many of the tracks on that album actually edged towards white noise in the instrumental backing. When you look at the B-sides to the Be Here Now singles, however, you can see a real genuine progression of the sound away from the Be Here Now wall of noise and towards something new that never fully materialised. Street Fighting Man, a cover of the classic Rolling Stones song, was the last B-side they ever recorded in the classic lineup in the studio in the 90s. And so it serves as the very best example we have of where they were evolving to before everything kind of fell apart. So join me as today we dig under the surface thanks to Kyle and the Oasis Collectors Group and discover every single ingredient that went into the recording of the Street Fighting Man cover and just a little hint of what might have been next in Noel Gallagher's grand master plan. The first thing we hear on Kyle's mixes is this percussion drum loop that's playing round and round and round pretty much through the entire song. At this time the band were massively into using loops. They had a drum loop playing all the way through, do you know what I mean, for example, which is much more audible in the 2016 Rethink mix from Noel. So, this is clearly another loop, but what is that sound? My theory is this, it could be a sound that's just been taken from a CD, but to me it sounds like a loose drum skin being held up, probably by Alan White, with a rhythm being tapped out on it with the drumstick. The sound itself is coated in distortion, but if you imagine it without the distortion, I think that's what it is. But what about the distortion sound itself? During the mad sonic experiment that was Be Here Now, they actually recorded a massive orchestra at Air Studios for the song Do You Know What I Mean? And then, on the Owen Morris mix, they ran the whole orchestra through a tiny little guitar amp. That resulted in the strings for that particular song having a kind of mad, muted, slightly crackly radio sound. And I think they might have done something similar here with this loop. I think they recorded the loose drum skin and then ran the sound through a guitar amp. Let me know if you think or know that it's something different in the comments below. But for now, I'm gonna say track number one, a drum skin loop played by Alan White. The next thing we hear is another drum loop, this time played on the toms. And again, it runs pretty much from start to finish of the entire song. At first, I thought this was just what Alan White played on the main kit as part of his actual drum take, but it's not. On the first of Kyle's tracks, you can hear the drum loop on the toms going, and then his actual drum take coming in over the top. Have a listen. So that's track number two, a Tom drum loop. Now this could actually have been played by Noel. We don't really know. At the time, Noel was doing quite a lot of drumming. He was playing for Mark Coyle's band, Tail Gunner. However, as we don't know, I think on the balance of probability, it was probably Alan White again. Oasis in the 90s were always massive on percussion. And next we hear one of their most commonly used instruments, the shaker. Once again, this could be being played by Liam or Noel or even Owen, but the balance of probability says that's eh, probably Alan again. And I'm fairly confident that this is actually a loop rather than someone doing the shaker from start to finish. So let's say track three, a shaker loop played by Alan White. But while the shaker was a common percussion instrument for Oasis, it wasn't the number one. Other than the drum kit itself, 
the most common signature Oasis percussion instrument was a tambourine. It features on almost every track they recorded in the 90s and is a massive and fundamental part of their signature sound from that era. And once again, it could be being played by anyone. Liam played tambourine a lot, Noel was perfectly capable, but on the balance of probability, let's just say Alan White. So we've had two different drum loops, completely independent of the main drum part. We've had a shaker and a tambourine, and you might think that has to be it for percussion, but you would be wrong. Because in the mix, there is another signature Oasis percussion feature, and it's the hand claps. It sounds to me like there's at least three people clapping there, but we know from photographs from the Be Here Now era where Brian Cannon is recording hand claps for all around the world, and from photos taken in later eras when the band were recording, that all kinds of people were involved in recording the hand claps. Without a first hand source who can actually tell us who played the hand claps, there's no real way of knowing. So let's just say track five, hand claps, by the band. Next up, we have a nice easy one. Alan White's full drum beat, the instantly recognizable groove of one of the defining British drummers of the 90s. Just listen to how awesome this drum groove is with the various percussion elements going on alongside it. And that's the percussion section done, but that's probably way more ingredients than you expected there to be in a straight ahead rocker like this song. It's amazing how much effort and thought actually go into making something sound effortless. Up next, we have the bass guitar, which as far as we know, was played by Gwigsy. There are all kinds of contradictory reports out there from people who were actually there but the general consensus is Noel played Gwigsy's bass parts on Definitely Maybe. On What's the Story Morning Glory, Noel did some of them while Gwigsy did some of the others. And by the time of Be Here Now, Gwigsy did all the bass. Bear in mind, he'd been playing bass as his full-time job by this point for years. He'd been touring the world, playing live in front of huge audiences for hours, night after night after night. You can't do that without developing some skill. So I think it's fair to say this is Gwigsy on bass. And it's a fascinating example because it's the last studio recording that was ever released while he was the bass player for the band in the 90s. Next up, we have the acoustic guitar, and I think this is Bonehead. And that's because it's actually pretty buried in the final mix. Remember, this is at the tail end of the Be Here Now era. So I don't think at this point in the Oasis history, Noel would have been happy to have his rhythm guitar backgrounded. In the original Rolling Stones version of this song, they recorded the acoustic guitar using a cassette tape, giving it that strange signature wobble. And although we can't really hear it all that clearly in any of the data that Kyle uploaded, I do think that is what Oasis did as well. And now we come to the electric distorted rhythm guitar. And this is so interesting to me because there's only one. (music) 
What a stark contrast to Be Here Now, the album to which this was a B-side. Be Here Now often had dozens and dozens of guitar tracks all layered up to create that guitar soup. And here is one of those little glimpses into what the next phase of Oasis in the 90s, had it materialised, might have sounded like. One guitar. And the guitar track sounds absolutely massive. It's clean, it's clear and it's crisp. Now this could be Bonehead, the guitar part's playing a lot of bar chords which was part of his signature sound, but my personal opinion is that because of the way it's foregrounded, it's probably null. So I'm going to say, track 9, electric distorted rhythm guitar, Noel Gallagher. Next up we have a really interesting artefact from Kyle's mixes, only a tiny little element of which made it into the final mix of the song. The third playthrough on Kyle's audio data is Noel singing the song from start to finish. But he sings it quite loosely, quite sloppily, and my feeling is this was never actually meant to make it onto the final mix, because this is the guide vocal for Liam. But, interestingly, a tiny little bit of this recording did make it onto the final mix. It's Noel right at the beginning of the track, moaning about the wires. Fucking hell. <laughs> fucking, coming, fucking wires everywhere. <laughs> it's cool out. <laughs> So there we have track 10, an audio artefact from Noel Gallagher's guide vocal. Now we come to track 11. Noel Gallagher had clearly by this time completely abandoned the insane wall of guitars from Be Here Now and gone back to just one electric rhythm. However, he hadn't abandoned other elements of the Oasis signature sound and in many of the tracks from the 90s he would flesh out the sound of a big heavy distorted guitar by adding a cleaner, crunchy, picking sound that would be buried in the mix. And on the choruses where the song says, what can a poor boy do, you hear Noel playing a kind of slightly clean, slightly crunchy arpeggiation of an F sharp 11. And then, later on, you hear the same track, driven a little bit harder, playing an almost Head Shrinker-esque riff over the top of this section. <music> Having listened through all the audio data a couple of times, I'm pretty sure that the arpeggiating lick and the Head Shrinker riff are both on the same guitar track. So let's say track 11, Noel Gallagher, electric guitar licks. One of the stranger sounds on this song kicks in after the chorus when the band are playing a C sharp. It's a kind of mad laser beam alien invasion sound. Now my first thought was that this was a bass guitar with a lot of distortion and a flanger on it. It's playing a low C sharp, which is a note you can't get on a regular guitar in standard tuning. However, at the end of the third mix down on Kyle's tapes, we hear that it's actually an electric guitar with wire on it. So, to explain that deep C sharp that we get using that same effect, Noel must have detuned his E string three semitones down to a C sharp. But it's not just a guitar with wire on it, there's an extra mad layer of crazy squawky distortion. This could have been added in post. Or it could be 
Noel playing around with a mysterious guitar pedal I've never really been able to ascertain the identity of that he often used live to create white noise. So I'm not quite sure what that secondary layer of distortion actually is, the one that creates that mad squawking sound, but I'm going to say track 12, distorted and detuned lead guitar, Noel Gallagher. And of course, the lead vocal is unmistakably Liam Gallagher. The last studio recording made by him and the band when both were in their prime, in their heyday, in the 90s. The fourth full playthrough on Kyle's tape is actually an uncompressed mix of the song and interestingly at the end of that fourth playthrough you can hear the musicians kind of farting around and playing bum notes at the end of their tracks. Now in the fifth and final playthrough of the song from Kyle's tracks, we have the best and clearest playthrough of the song so far. It's not the finished version, but it's very close. And the really enjoyable thing about this particular mix is that there is no brick wall limiter on it at all. The version released as the B-side to the All Around the World single was brick walled so hard that you can hear the crackle and distortion of the song pushing up into the red all the way through. This fifth version from Kyle's tapes, however, doesn't do any of that. It's got loads of headroom. And a very pleasing side effect of this is that we can hear Noel Gallagher's backing vocals a lot more clearly. And there's not just one backing vocal track, but two. You can hear him singing in unison throughout the chorus and then breaking off into harmony on the word man. I absolutely love the third verse in this version. His backing vocals sound fantastic and I would have loved to hear them a little bit louder in the final mix. In the early days when they were recording Definitely Maybe, producer Owen Morris frequently had to scale back Noel Gallagher's countless lead guitar tracks. Here however, just like the rhythm guitar, there's just one. The lead track isn't featured very prominently in the final version but in the fifth playthrough on Kyle's tracks, we hear certain lead guitar parts that never made it into the final mix. And probably the clearest moment is in the intro, where the guitar plays along with the bass. And towards the end of the fifth playthrough, we get a slightly clearer version of the guitar solo for the outro, and we get to hear the actual end of the song without the fade out. Have a listen. And that's pretty much everything I could hear on this song, just 16 tracks. What a stark difference from the 96 tracks that were on every single song for Be Here Now. And that gives us a little idea of where Oasis was sonically aiming for next, following Be Here Now, in the three year gap of silence that might not have followed if Be Here Now had been bigger than it was. Loads and loads more groove and percussion based loops compared to their sound at the beginning of the decade. And much more minimalistic raw guitar, just four tracks from Noel, as opposed to in excess of 50 on the album they had released just a few months earlier. The Be Here Now era was one of their most experimental and interesting periods of recording as a band, and frustratingly it's the 90s era for which there is the least available information or stems.
So I hope you've enjoyed this rare opportunity to see behind the curtain of what Oasis were doing in the studio in this very, very neglected era. But as always, have I missed anything? Can you hear anything in this song that I might have missed? If you're a bit of an audio nerd like me, go check out the raw data on the Oasis Collectors Group YouTube page. The link is in the description and let me know what you hear in the comments below. Thanks for watching and as always, I'll see you next time.